So you wanna turn your photography into a six figure full-time gig? That's well, pretty cool. Let me show you what I did to do just that. Will Simpson here and welcome back to Exploring Photography. Today I'm gonna to show you the different steps that I took to go from making zero dollars to over $100,000 in less than a year. Now, if you're thinking this is going to be like most advertised videos like this, minimal work for maximum reward, then you're in the wrong place because this isn't OnlyFans and I'm not some hot chick selling pictures of my feet. Honestly, no one would wanna see those pictures anyways. That would just not be good at all. Anyways, if you're really serious about photography and really want to give it a go and make it a full-time gig and really enjoy working with clients and taking amazing photos and are down for some just good old-fashioned hard work, then maybe I can help you. But one of the most important reasons to remember about the, why people fail is not because of lack of clients or lack of opportunity, but simply the drive to push through. This, this is going to be work. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. If, if, if you're not in, into it, move along, little doggy, <laughs> because this does take time and it is so worth it when you put in all the hard work and all of the effort and investment and all that and then get on the other side and suddenly have built this beautiful, successful baby. It is such an, a, a privilege and a, a great feeling to know that you did that. And I really, I really want that for you. So that's, that's all I want to get like your agreement. Like if you continue watching this video, awesome. Just know that the data I'm giving you, it works. I'm proof of that. So yeah. Now all the resources in this video I have used, I found by myself and I've used for over a year and they all work really, really well. Now I'm gonna link everything in the description and some of them are affiliate links, but none of this video is sponsored by anyone. I have used and been successful with these different programs and different things and this is why I'm recommending them to you. So the first thing you wanna do is have a website. Now some people think, well, my portfolio is my Instagram. No, your portfolio is not your Instagram. Instagram is a social media platform. Yeah, a lot of times people will say, let me see your Instagram and that's great but there is something about having your own website. It gives you a more official presence. It's like, okay, this person took the time, created a website, it looks good. They are more professional than Joe Schmo over here who only has Instagram. It just creates a more um, trustworthy atmosphere. So yeah, for sure, have an Instagram, have Pinterest, but also have a website. Now having a website doesn't have to be expensive. Um, what is your, what is your domain name? You know, uh, blah, blah, photography, fine. Um, photocreations.com, whatever, you know, find your, your name. And then I just use Google domain. So go to googledomains.com or domains.google.com, one of the two, and you can find and find a domain that's available that you like, purchase it, and then create a website. Now I use Shopify. Well, the reason I use Shopify is because this allows me to sell presets, merchandise, prints, things like that. If you don't have those to sell, then you can use that one company that sponsors every YouTube video known to man, um, Squarespace. Yeah, Squarespace. And just so you know, this video is not sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> but yeah, so there's Squarespace, there's Shopify, there's Wix, there's so many different things. And I'm sure you can find a friend of yours and say, hey, wanna swap? Build, build me a website, I'll do a photo shoot for you. You know, there's ways you can do this to keep it cheap and not expensive at all. A website does not mean hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So that's the first thing. Uh, investigate websites, get a domain name, get a website built, put together all of your really nice photos, your styles, things like that. Find someone to help you build or just get a template like Squarespace, like Shopify, something like that. Throw all your photos in. I actually think Shopify might be free minus like couple hundred bucks a year. Anyways, that's besides the point. That's for you to do some research and create your first website. Now, number two is pricing. Now, pricing is a, an interesting one because in this game, photography, videography, things like that, the prices are so variable. Like you can find a person who does a shoot for $50 in an hour and you can find someone who does a shoot for $100 an hour. This is, this is crazy to me because 
how do you make money? Like this, this leads me back to, oh, you're a photographer. What do you do for a real job? God, I hate that comment. Like, it's, so, it's just so rude. <laughs> but it is because people tend to undercharge for their photography. You have a camera, that camera costs money. You have lighting, that lighting costs money. You have a life, that life costs money. You have experience, you have education, you've spent time, time is money. So you have all of these things that add up to your ability to take really good photos. You should be charging for that. There's no reason you shouldn't be paid decent money. And I would say that there are other factors that come into play. For example, let's say you're in um, location A and there's thousands of photographers around there. Well, your prices are probably gonna be a little bit lower depending on the, 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 the want, the need for photography. Uh, then let's say you go to location B, there's less photographers, but there's a higher need. Well, you can charge a little bit more. So it's finding the sweet spot, but not undercutting yourself. So how do you figure out your pricing? Well, here's the easiest way to figure it out and to kind of get a relative starting point. And I'm just gonna write it down. So let's figure out how much you wanna make per week and be real. Like don't start out with, I wanna make $10,000 per week. Build up to it. Start with a, a relatively decent number. Um, think about this. How much money do you need to live per week? Let's say you need $1,000 to live per week. That is like your bare minimum. Okay, good. So $1,000, let's make it a little bit because you don't wanna work on bare minimums, you wanna work on a little bit higher. So let's say you need to make $1,500 a week. Good? So $1,500 a week. Good. How many days do you wanna work? Do you wanna take your Saturdays and Sundays off? Well, if you're a photographer, probably not <laughs> because those are, those are pretty key days for weddings and photo shoots and things like that. So let's say you wanna work five days a week, a standard day, let's say Wednesday through Sunday or something like that. So five days a week, you can have Monday and Tuesday for your editing days. Let's say you wanna do one shoot a day. So that's five shoots a week, right? Okay, good. Five divided by 1,500 is $300. Good. So for every hour shoot, charge $300. Now let's say you get a two hour shoot. Well, there's $600. Now you've made a little extra. Let's say you want, you get a wedding. That's $2,000 for six hours for one day's work. Well, there you go. There's your week's pay, but now you have all the editing and time. So you got to remember that, but that's really easy. If you do five hour shoots at a $300 a pop, that's $1,500. That's 500 more than your minimum every week. Now, how do you get those five? Well, we'll get into that in a second. However, this gives you a starting point to say, okay, I need to be making about $300 an hour. So maybe I charge 350 if I can, there's a little bit more. Maybe I charge 250 if I can't, and I throw in an extra shoot. There's always ways to work around it, but this is a nice little formula to find like a good starting point for your price. Now, number three, how are you going to take some payments? Let's say you got a client, they want to pay you. Now you could use Venmo, you could use Cash App, stuff like that, but you wanna be, again, a little bit more official. Hey, Venmo me the money. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't verify, it doesn't really give a business feel. It just kinda gives like a friend feel. So I, I don't really see it as being super official. I use a company called Honeybook and they handle all of my contracts. So they have templates which you can just put in your information and use those. They handle proposals, they handle, they take all the credit cards, they handle all my contacts lists and all of that. So I can put in all of this information in HoneyBook. So a client comes to me and says, hey, I wanna book you. I said, cool, what's your email? Put in their information, send them a proposal, they open it up and they're like, whoa, this is super official. They say, yes, I want it. They sign the contract, they pay with a credit card and boom, now I've booked a client also. HoneyBook has a calendar, so it automatically puts them in that calendar. So if I go to book another client on that day, it says, hey, whoa there, you might have a conflicting appointment here. Check that out before you book this client. So they have checks, they have checks and balances, and they have reports, all of this stuff. I've been very, very happy with HoneyBook, and if you do use that link to get HoneyBook, they give you like 35% off, which is awesome. So that's how I handle all of my clients, payments, contracts, everything. It's just super simple and I don't even have to think about it and that makes me happy. 
Number four, how do you get clients? Where do you market? How do you find people who will hire you? I've tried word of mouth. I only got so far. Well, that's kind of like my whole story. I, when I first started, that's all I did was word of mouth. I was posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, posting on other people's Facebook, having people share my posts. And yeah, I got a few jobs here and there, but I didn't really get jobs. Like this is going to work jobs. I got like, Hey, some extra money for this month. Hey, cool. A little extra cash there, but I never got, Hey, this is a full time. I am doing well now in my job kind of leads and income. So what I started doing is I tested all kinds of things. I tested Google ads. I tested Yelp. I tested Thumbtack and I tested Bark, which is another lead generation program. I think there's one more. Um, I think, I don't know. I, maybe not. Anyways. So here's my results from it. All of them require you to spend a little bit of money. Which ones are more successful? Well, let's just start from the lowest up. First was Google ads. I spent, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. So I signed up for Google ads and I put in $500. It says when you spend $500 in this amount of time, you'll get an extra free $500. So during the $500 that I spent, I got, I don't know, uh, some, some, some leads, nothing crazy, but I did pay for that $500. Like I, I think I got about 10 leads and I think I made around $2,000. Yes, great, not great. I mean, I spent 500 to make 2000, so $1,500 profit minus all of this other stuff. It was okay. Um, and then when Google gave me, oh, here's your $500 in free ads, not a single lead. <laughs> not a single, sorry, I should say not a single closed lead. I kept getting phone calls, spam calls. I kept getting emails saying, Hey, your website needs adjusting or whatever from leads. So I spent $500, technically a thousand dollars and got $2,000 worth of sales. Give or take. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of trying to recollect and guess, but it wasn't great. Okay. So Google ads, I might've done it wrong. I'm not a Google genius. Maybe SEO was off search engine optimization, keywords, stuff like that. I don't know. Will I try it again? Probably eventually. Uh, anyways, number two was Yelp. Now Yelp people have, um, mixed feelings about Yelp. So when I did Yelp again, they spend $300, get $300 free, plus get these premium tiers, blah, blah, blah. I did that. And I got quite a few leads. I would say that I actually made a good amount of money on Yelp with that, those benefits. Now, once those benefits ended, that $300 credit went away. Uh, I started having to pay for premium services, things like that. All these things that I got for free, I started spending a lot more money on Yelp. So my profit margin dropped substantially. So was Yelp profitable? Yes. Was it more work and more expense for those profits? Yes. Would I do it again? Maybe. Uh, Right now, no, but it was something to try. And um, I would recommend you at least investing that initial $300 in it to get those that $300 credit. And I think if you call them, you might be able to get a little bit more, but um, it'll give you some traction. It gives you some, give you some, some leads at least to start working with, but it does work with your website. So make sure you have a website there. Uh, the other thing about Yelp is they have this really strict review policy, which I find super annoying. I got tons of five star reviews from clients that I got from Yelp and Yelp said, Hey, these look suspicious. We're going to put them on a not Yelp approved list. So if you go to my profile on Yelp, it says I have zero reviews, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it says read reviews and then there's all the reviews, but it doesn't give me a star rating. So that was super annoying, but it is what it is. Okay. Number three is a company called bark. Uh, and I'll, again, I'll link all of these in the description. Uh, Bark is a website that you pay money and then you get credits. So for say $300, you'll get 200 credits. And then every lead comes in, you get a sheet of information and you can buy that lead. Now that lead, then you get the information, uh, their contact information. You can contact them and try and close them. It's a lead generation program. 
works pretty good. I still use it today. Um, I'm very picky. Like some of them, a lot of them say, I'm researching and planning. Doesn't sound like a really hot lead to me, so I'll kind of avoid those. But if someone says, I'm definitely gonna hire someone, and I like what the job description is, then I'll say, yeah, let me get that lead. And I've booked some really, really good jobs on Bark. So that one I do recommend, and it requires almost zero expense because you buy the credits, so $300, but then you can pick and choose your leads as needed. If you don't like a lead, you don't, you don't book a lead. Now there is always the risk that you don't get the lead. So then you have that expense and that is with any marketing. You are never going to have a 100% close rate. And if you do, tell me your secrets. <laughs> okay, and number four or number one, I'm not sure which way we went, um, is Thumbtack. I have had so much success with Thumbtack. Now this is a little different. You put in $300, you set up direct leads, uh, you advertise basically for what services like portrait photography, engagement photography, wedding photography, and then based on the lead, someone goes on the website, fill out the information. If it matches your specifications, you're charged for the lead and you receive the lead. Now you have time, you're timed with how quickly you respond. So the faster you respond and the faster you get in touch with the customer, the better position you'll have on Thumbtack. And obviously, the faster you contact that client, the more likely you are to book them. So I've found a lot of success with Thumbtack, but I am aggressive. Like a lead comes in and I'm like on it. I text them right away and say, hey, this is Will with Will Simpson Photography, how's it going? Want a book? <laughs> Not exactly like that, but don't be slack. You can spend a lot of money and waste a lot of money by not responding to these leads. So as soon as they come in, respond. You gotta be ready to go. This is where that hard work comes in. So you just gotta make it happen. So those are the ones that I recommend, um, but you also have to be willing to lose. Here's the thing is when you're dealing with people, you someone will be like, oh, well, I was hoping to get it for $150 rather than $300. Well, don't just be like, okay, like don't be that hungry for a lead that you're willing to second guess yourself. Know your value. Your product is good. So don't undersell yourself because most likely you will probably book another job for that same slot that that person now got you for 150 and you, you now you can't get the other job because it just, it because you've already booked. So just know your value. And if you do wanna book a bunch of jobs, that's fine. You can lower your price a little. So you're at 300, tell you what, I'll do it for 250 for you. Okay, good, negotiate. It's totally reasonable. If you have a free date and you wanna just book something, sure, go ahead and book it. But just know your value. Don't try and undersell yourself and don't try and undercut yourself. Your time, your, time, your product, and your energy is very valuable. So just make sure you Keep that in mind. Okay, now number five, and this is my funnest one. Work your ass off. That's all there is to it. Like, honestly, this is one of the most important things that you can learn. The people that do really well in this industry are not watching TikTok for an hour, two hours, three hours, Instagram, three hours a day. They're not doing that. They're not watching YouTube. They're not watching TV. They're not, ooh, I'm gonna go binge the next show. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. No, they, these are not the people that are, that are making this successful. If you wanna be successful in this industry, you have to work your ass off. Now, I'm not saying you have to completely get rid of your entire life. Like you can still go out and have fun. In actual fact, once you build this up, you'll have more freedoms than you did before because you can make your own schedule. You'll have enough bookings that you can be like, ooh, you know what, I actually wanna take that day off. I wanna sit in my freaking fuzzy robe and fuzzy slippers and veg on the couch all day on uh, January 12th, because <laughs> I can. But you can do that, like you'll have those freedoms, but you need to build up to that. So start building the website, start collecting the portfolio, start advertising yourself, start getting your name out and just start expanding. Because here's the thing, once you start expanding all of those levels, you will actually, it starts small and then it gets bigger, 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 bigger because they, they feed off of each other. 
Google sees you starting to get jobs over here and start um, getting advertised by like Bark or Thumbtack or something, Google's like, hey, we wanna compete with you. So they'll give you free boosting. And then these guys will say, ooh, hey, we wanna, we wanna get those leads. So, ooh, we'll give you more free boosting. And it kind of like works off each other and you slowly grow. But you have to build up to that. I mean, if you Google me right now, I show up quite often. It's, it's pretty cool. Like if you go on YouTube and search Will Simpson, I'm all over the place. It's freaking amazing. But it took time. Like I, I did my YouTube channel. I've been doing it for five years, four years, four years, 2018, almost five years, oh, almost five years. And it, it took a while. Now I'm not saying it's going to take you five years. That was for YouTube and that oh, YouTube is saturated with things like me. So <laughs> anyways, just saying work hard. When you find yourself getting lazy, find something else you can do and go do it. Trust me, it'll be worth it. All right, number six is deliver good work and customer relations. Here's the thing, you're a photographer. Yes, you create great photos. You, you work with clients and your pictures are amazing. But don't be an asshole. Like, oh my God. I, there are so many times that I've worked with clients and they're like, oh my God, you're the funnest photographer we've ever met. Or I did a wedding and they're like, man, the photographers that I've had at other weddings were so solid and like, stiff and and I, I constantly get comments and compliments on how fun I am and how um, enjoyable I am to have around. I've been called family before, I've you know, all of these things. You need to have fun with your clients and you need to produce a good product for them. One, they hired you to do good work. So make sure that you're giving them a good production, a good product. Um, your edits, make sure you get them done quickly. There's times when I've had photographer or clients who are like, it took me six months to get my photos back from my wedding. I'm like, damn. Like I have a max of like, I try and get them as fast as possible. Generally a two to three day turnaround on like hourly shoots, engagement shoots or something like that. Uh, weddings, I'm trying to be between two weeks and four weeks at the max, like three weeks. I'm like cringe, I'm like, oh my God, I have to get this wedding done. I have to get this wedding done. And it's just, it drives me nuts. But that's the thing is you have to give your client a great product and a great turnaround. So again, going back to my previous note, work your ass off, like create a great customer relations, deliver awesome products and your, those clients will re start referring other people to you and it's amazing. I've probably had several repeat clients as well as referral clients that have booked me up for months at a time. So it, that is a big, big point. Like if you have good relations with your customers, they will give you more people and those people are awesome. So remember, just deliver good work to your clients and have great customer relations with them. Just have fun. Like this is a fun industry. So have fun with it. Like that's, that's kind of the point. All right. Number seven is start getting reviews. So this is super important. Um, when you get a really good customer and honestly, you should be having this with almost all of your customers. I won't say all because there are going to be some customers that you just, you just can't please. And no matter what I try or what you try, sometimes there are just going to be those customers. But it is important to get those customers, the, the ones that are amazed, they, they just loved it to write reviews. So when you finish a shoot and you're like, and they're like, oh my God, these are incredible. Ask them for a review, send them your Google review link. If they booked you on Thumbtack, tell them to leave a review on Thumbtack. If they booked you on Bark, tell them to leave a review on Bark, ask for the review. These reviews build up. And if they booked you on Thumbtack, have them leave you a thumbtack review and a Google review. You know, you start getting these reviews and again, that will boost you up in the, the, the search results and just help you a lot. So this is really important. Don't forget about this. And also screenshot the good ones. Well, they should all be good ones, but screenshot the ones uh, and share them on your social media. People love seeing what other people have to say about you. And that uh, incentivizes them to book you. 
So again, those reviews will help you get more jobs and more bookings. So those are really important. Finally, number eight and uh, a very important one as well. Honestly, all these are really important. It's a lot to work on and I could actually make a course on this. So if this would be something you'd be interested, just let me know. But number eight is developing a customer base, a database. So every time you get a customer, you want to get their email, you want to get their name, potentially their obviously their phone number and their address. This way you develop a customer database. Now HoneyBook can store all this information, so it makes it super, super simple. You put in all this information when you get them as a customer, and then you build their proposal, and then you send them their invoice, they pay it, they sign the contract, all that. But now you've saved all their information and you have a whole customer list right there, easy to access. But you start sending out emails. So you email your customer list, not, not spam them. You don't send them one, two a day, maybe one a week, but once a month, uh, something interesting tidbit, a fun fact, maybe a special that you're running, and this helps fill up free space. But also they say, oh, hey, I remember Will. He, he did a great photo shoot for me. My friend Mary is looking for a photographer for her wedding. Mary, go check out Will. Hey, I just saw he's running a special, 10% off weddings. There you go. Good, now you just got a lead that you normally wouldn't have gotten without sending that email. So that email just made you 1500, 2000, $4,000 and it costs you five minutes of typing. Like it's, it's just great. So start developing a customer list and start talking with them. Start sending them out simple little emails, nothing crazy. Like you don't have to make them long. You don't have to make them anything. It's just, Hey, how's it going? Here's a cool thing that came up today. Uh, Hey, how's it going? Did you know that the first camera, was built in a room and the light flipped it upside down and it would, you know, stupid little things. People like stuff like that, little, little pieces of information. So it doesn't have to be complicated, but that is a very, very good way to keep in touch with your customers and keep them thinking of you to potentially rebook you. Okay. Now that's a lot. Like I know we did this pretty fast. Actually, I think this video is probably gonna be about 20 minutes at this point, longer than I was expecting, but it is a lot of information. And if you made it to the end, bravo, you are, you're gonna get there and I hope I can help you. So if anything, you have any questions, just comment below. You can also send me an email. I'll send, put my email in the description. Um, and I would love to help you with this. If you wanna see more data on this or you wanna, um, want a course on this, let me know, but, I'd love to help you become an awesome photographer, a full-time photographer. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done it already. But that's it for this video. Happy hunting, happy shooting, and <laughs> keep me posted.